Hi, I'm Keir Cutler. This is me at McGill University in the 1970s. I majored in theater. Back then, the Shakespeare authorship question very rarely came up. If it did, we were told it was a crackpot conspiracy theory and totally foundationless. Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare, period. With, admittedly, the small issue of the first two acts of Pericles, which might have been written by someone else, but otherwise, there was no Shakespeare authorship question. Well, a lot has happened in the intervening years. Flash forward to today. And yes, the experts still say Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare. But suddenly, it's no longer just Pericles that's up for grabs. Now, a whole host of plays, acts, and scenes are of questionable origin. In fact, it's difficult to even find out what isn't in question. If one goes to the very center of the belief that Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare, in Stratford-upon-Avon, England, and the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust, we learn in their book, Shakespeare Beyond Doubt, Evidence, Argument, Controversy, that a conservative estimate of collaborators now includes, quote, John Fletcher, Thomas Middleton, Thomas Nash, George Peel, George Wilkins, and some others, unquote. All, according to the Birthplace Trust, having contributed to Shakespeare's writings. Hmm. And if one then looks to Oxford University, another bastion of the belief that Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare, well, we find another name added to the contributors. Christopher Marlowe, who the Oxford University Press now credits with co-writing three of Shakespeare's plays. So the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust mentions five playwrights as contributing to the works, but fails to mention Christopher Marlowe by name, while Oxford University is so absolutely certain of Christopher Marlowe's contribution that they have reattributed three of the plays to him. That would mean the authorship of Shakespeare's works is now a small but growing collective of authors who even the so-called experts in the field don't know whom to mention, nor whom to include. Well, that's not Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare. Let's look at something else from the Birthplace Trust book. Andrew Hadfield states, and keep in mind, this is their book, supposedly arguing that there is no Shakespeare authorship question. Quote, we may find that some passages, even some widely beloved sections of plays or favorite lines, were not Shakespeare's work. So we're going to find someday in the future that sections of plays or favorite lines were not Shakespeare's work? Isn't that the very definition of the Shakespeare authorship question? Allow me to take a moment to recap. When I was young, 40 or so years ago, Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare meant exactly that. Shakespeare wrote all the plays and all the poems, with the possible exception of some of Pericles. However, today, according to two of the most significant world centers of traditional Shakespeare studies, the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust and Oxford University, Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare means an unknown amount of collaboration by an undetermined number of writers even to the point where some of the plays have to be reattributed as only co-written by William Shakespeare. And yet, despite this significant transformation, this tectonic shift, if you will, from sole writer to collaborator and co-writer with a minimum, a conservative estimate of a half dozen others, we are still told that there's absolutely no Shakespeare authorship question. In fact, a recent survey of Shakespeare professors found that over 80% tell their students there's no such thing as a Shakespeare authorship question. I hold in my hand a facsimile of the first folio of William Shakespeare, published in 1623, seven years after the death of William Shakespeare. It is without question the most important publication in regards to Shakespeare's works, and is the basis for the general belief that William of Stratford wrote the plays and poems. In fact, this folio is the only reliable source of 20 of the 36 plays. Masterpieces such as Macbeth, Twelfth Night, Julius Caesar, As You Like It, only exist today because of this extraordinary book. 
We have the list of the principal actors. There's William Shakespeare. And we have 16 pages of poems, eulogies, dedications, all confirming for most people that the author was indeed William Shakespeare of Stratford-upon-Avon. The word Stratford appears, and the word Avon appears, as in Sweet Swan of Avon. And then, of course, you have the title page. Very clearly written, William Shakespeare's Comedies, Histories, Tragedies. There's no mention of collaboration. There's absolutely no hint of collaboration. The works were written, according to the first folio, by one man and one man only, William Shakespeare. Shakespeare's fellow actors, John Hemmings and Henry Condell, prepared and oversaw the first folio. They write in the preface that the plays are, quote, perfect and as he conceived them, unquote. Not as they conceived them, as he conceived them. There's no mention of collaboration. There's no suggestion of collaboration. Are we to reject the assertions of Hemmings and Condell? Are we to assume that neither of these men knew of the collaboration? And what about Ben Jonson? He writes in his famous verses in the preface that Shakespeare was, quote, the soul of the age, the applause, delight, and wonder of our stage. Would Johnson call someone who collaborated with at least six other writers the soul of the age, the applause, delight, and wonder of our stage, and never mention these other collaborators? And what about when Johnson's, Johnson speaks of Shakespeare outshining the authors of his day, Lily, Kidd, Christopher Marlowe? Marlowe? According to Ben Johnson, Shakespeare outshone Marlowe. But Oxford University tells us that Three of the Shakespeare's plays were co-written by Christopher Marlowe. <laughs> Can a writer outshine his co-writer? Was Johnson unaware of the collaboration? And what about the dedication by Leonard Diggs? Again, this is in the 16 pages of preface of the first folio. Diggs says, speaking of Shakespeare, quote, Every line and each verse shall revive and redeem thee. By thee he's referring to Shakespeare. Every line and each verse. Well, how can that be? Didn't we just read in the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust book that we may find some passages, even some widely beloved sections of plays or favorite lines were not Shakespeare's work? If some of the lines and some of the verses were not Shakespeare's work, how can every line and verse revive and redeem him? There's nothing wrong with shifting our beliefs about the works of William Shakespeare from sole writer to William Shakespeare as collaborator and co-writer. However, this alteration has to go hand in hand with acknowledging there is indeed a Shakespeare authorship question. Now, many people, including many of the world's top experts, strongly believe that William Shakespeare of Stratford-upon-Avon wrote some or most of the plays and poems. But this is a belief, that's all it is. Our understanding is clearly evolving, and it's continuing to evolve. As the Birthplace Trust book says, quote-unquote, we may find. And by we may find, what they mean is, at the moment, we do not know. Either one believes Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare, or one believes there was an unknown number of collaborators. It's one or the other. And if one wishes to argue in favor of collaboration, then the testimonies and the multiple of multiple individuals in the preface of the first folio collapses. And once the testimony in the first folio collapses, there's no backup. We have no handwritten plays or poems or letters surviving in the Stratford man's hand. William of Stratford's Last Will and Testament never mentions he was a writer. It never mentions a play, a poem, a book, an unfinished literary work. There's not a scrap of manuscript of any kind mentioned in the will. Yes, there are 70 surviving documents in William Shakespeare's lifetime. We know the man existed. We know he was a businessman, an actor, a theater manager. But none of these documents state he was a writer. It's only the first folio that is the basis of that claim. Look, I realize many Shakespeare professors have spent their entire professional lives claiming Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare, period. Naturally, they are reluctant to now concede they were wrong, and no one wants egg on their face. Better to pretend that one can completely disregard the preface in the first folio. Better to pretend nothing has changed. Better to now attest, of course there was collaboration. That's the way theater was done back then. Nothing to see here. Move along, move along. Oh, I understand the motivation. I have a PhD myself. I've spent many years in different schools, colleges, and universities to work to that degree. 
I am fully aware that academics would rather sever an arm than ever mention or, or even acknowledge fault. But that's simply unacceptable. It is now abundantly clear that when one looks at the first folio and one compares it to the contradictory modern day theories on collaboration, there is indeed a Shakespeare authorship question. And it is incumbent upon everyone, including and especially those who hold a position of educational authority, to simply admit the obvious. The statement Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare is no longer defensible. We have a Shakespeare authorship question because we simply do not know who created these works. We do not know how many writers were involved. And most importantly, we do not know whether William Shakespeare of Stratford-upon-Avon was one of the writers of these great works or was simply a theater manager whose name was used as a catch-all for the plays and poems.